After my parents got divorced, my father actually got custody of my brother and I. A few years back, I had some conversations with my mother, and I asked her, you know, how, why did that happen? And uh, I guess my father sort of, you know, he was very insistent that he was going to raise us and not my mother. And uh, and I guess there was a lot of, you know, fear. He was he was you know abusive towards my mother, and so he used a lot of fear tactics to get her to not fight for us, I guess, in court. So one incidence of physical abuse that I do remember, um, I remember hearing them arguing one time and uh, they were like locked in their bedroom arguing and me and my brother were outside and, uh, you know, we could hear them yelling and my brother, you know, he's younger than me, he was crying and he was like, oh, you know, he was like, they're going to get a divorce and oh my God, at the time I remember I was like, that's a good thing, you know, I was like, they should get a divorce. <laughs> Um, you know, I was like 10 or younger or something. Um, but I just remember hearing them arguing and then I remember when the door opened, they came out and they both had blood on them. That was like the first time she ever hit him back. You know, it, it hurts you in a sense that, I mean, you know, that's your mother, that's your father. And so you love them. And so to hear somebody talking, you know, it's like you get angry when your friends crack a joke about your mom or whatever. So what do you do when your father does that? <laughs> you know, you're kind of stuck because that's your father and that's, you know, and you don't want to say something to him. But, um, you know, and I, I think you sort of, it's sort of like, okay, well, he's insulting my mother, you know, and, and but she's my mother. So in a way he's almost insulting me too, you know, because then you start thinking about, well, do I do that? Do I act in these ways? You know, um, and so I think that's probably the biggest way in which it affected me. One particular relationship I was in that um, started when I was a senior in high school and then went on into my first couple of years of college. We broke up at one point and, um, you know, even after we broke up, I was, it sort of wasn't a clean breakup and I wasn't completely over her type of thing. And for a while I was doing things like uh, I, would, I was yelling at her. I called her all kinds of names. Um, you know, I was like insulting her to her friends. You know, I mean, I remember at one point, like I w would like walk past a room and I was yelling out, you know, all sorts of insults so that everybody could hear. And, um, you know, it, it reached a point where, um, I mean, I, you know, I started to get depressed and that kind of stuff, but it was really that, it was at that point that I sort of realized, and as I started to sort of deal with, I guess, my anger and my hurt in that situation, I really was also upset at myself for acting in that way, you know? And it was like, um, that was when I sort of started to think, you know, <laughs> that's, that's something my father would do. Like, I wish I had, um, had an opportunity to sort of, I guess, you know, grow to love him um, as my father, as opposed to growing up fearing him. We had one conversation where we talked about, uh, I think we sort of started to approach the topic of the fact that he was abusive towards my mother. Um, and he pretty much, you know, he had excuses and justifications for his behavior. and. Um, we, the place where we left it was that we need to have more conversation about it. I don't want to be somebody that my, my children fear, you know. I, I want them to look forward to me coming home as opposed to being afraid when I come home. Uh, I want them to to want to do things with me and, um, you know, I, I want to, I also would like to exhibit, I would want them to see a positive, healthy relationship between me and their mother. You don't want your kid to be afraid of you, you know, because when I was younger, I was definitely afraid of my father. I wanted the relationship with the man that I married. I wanted the relationship that we had for five years before he started being violent.
My dad spent most of his time during the week out of town, and so it really wasn't something to look forward to, to have dad coming home for the weekend. The belt was always hanging on the bathroom doorknob, and so I always knew you know, what, what I was in for at the end of the week. And I kind of see the reason that I was so free in being abusive with the family was I, I kind of saw that as a continuation of my own childhood. What I used to do is I'd grab Nancy by her arms and, you know, I'd be nose to nose with her and, and just screaming what I thought should be done right into her face. And so she always had black and blue marks on the back of her arm and it never dawned on me for a long, long time that I had put them there and that that was just my anger. The kids, I used to hit the kids. He was really quick to throw the hammer down, especially me and my oldest brother. You know, we definitely got the brunt of a lot of, you know, of the physical stuff. Like it would start, him and my mom would fight and he'd start getting like really, saying really mean shit to my mom. and. So we'd get into it too and tell him to shut up and you know get the hell out of here and stop being such an asshole and everything but then it would just you know like a belt would come out or something would happen and he'd just start he'd lose it you know yeah. it was hard to see the boys being afraid of him and also being very angry with him at the same time and not knowing what to do with that because they uh, because he wasn't at any spot where anyone could approach him about his anger. I was controlling, domineering, uh, overbearing with my wife and my kids for many, many years. The reason I began to pursue change was that Nancy kept prodding me to do that. And what she was doing at that point was planting the seeds for me to, to see for myself that things weren't going very well and it was up to me to go out and to make the changes that were necessary. I was very tired of it and it seemed like a waste of time, waste of energy and I didn't want to participate in that anymore. The depression was years of my abuse that had kind of just beaten her down to the point where she didn't feel like she could function anymore and she actually wasn't getting out of bed for a while. Um, and then me just getting angrier about that, you know? So it's just, it's just a compounding situation here where, you know, I effectively reduced her to rubble and now I'm angry because of it, you know? So it was all myself. It was all my own actions that got us to this point. He seemed to be reluctant really to give up his anger, but on the other hand, I think he thought somewhere in there that, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't working for me. And so he did go and see Stephen. I first met Scott Gerard when he came in to the Men Overcoming Violence program for a, an intake interview. And um, it was a very powerful experience to sit with him while we had this interview because he, I watched him um, open up in a way that it was clear he had never opened up before about what was going on in his, in his relationship and also what was going on inside himself. When I was in group, it was week 16, and as strange as it seems, it's, it's uh, another man who decided to take the same route that I did. He was an ex-basketball player, and um, he was sitting across the room from me, and he leaned over and he just sat, leaned over in his seat and put him nose to nose with me. And he said to me, I've been listening to the same shit come out of your mouth for 16 weeks. I think it's time you decided you were either gonna make some changes or stop wasting all of our time. And it was really at that point that I began to, I think, take the work seriously. After a while, I got a job and my job was uh, working during the dinner hour, and Scott's job at that time was working from 5 a.m. till 1 p.m., and so he was here as I was leaving for work. And so he had to take on the task of preparing dinner. So it took a few years, you know, but the kids all came around to um, expecting that there was going to be dinner every night, you know, and there was dinner every night. It was relatively good, you know, and uh, 
So that became kind of a comfort rather than a threat. I became a comfort to them in the household. I think that by our son seeing him prepare dinner, be here and be open to them, because after a while they did become pretty angry with him and would you know, want to confront him and did confront him and realized that he wasn't going to be angry back at them, that they were able to put a lot of that to rest, I think. I have no desire to return to any of that behavior. It really, I understand how it didn't, didn't ever serve me. Everyone is working on their own issues. Um, my wife is relatively happy with the way things have, have turned out. I'm certainly happy and I have peace in my life every day.